Muniba al Masri is the father of Palestinian entrepreneurship. After turning down Yasser Arafat's plea to assume the Palestinian presidency, Masri founded the key financial institutions, including the Palestinian Stock Exchange, Telecommunications Company, and the principal holding company. In recognition of his stature, Masri has been a primary interlocutor in Fatah and Hamas reconciliation negotiations. Do you think, in light of the Arab Spring, that it's time for the Israelis and Palestinians to sit together and finally concretely come up with some kind of plan? Felix, you're asking very excellent questions, and you have put your uh, fingers on the most important thing. I think this is the best time. I, we, we, it took us a long time to take the hatred from both the, the Israelis and the Palestinians and the Arabs and Jews in Oslo. And now the Arab Spring coming, and I'm very afraid that this hatred and this feeling will come back again because most of the Arab Springs will be diverted toward Israel. And this will be really, really, uh, I see very black, very black things coming unless Israel and the Israelis and Palestinians take things in their hands to say, let's use the Arab Spring Let's use the Arab Spring to the benefit of the whole region and make peace as, as a result of the Arab Spring. We, we, can, we had enough. We had enough suffering. We have enough thing. And as I said before, we are destined to live together. Let's make the best out of this. Let's have this two-state solution. People living side by side, cooperating, loving, marrying, um, working together, having joint ventures, and go into the world. And st I mean, we have a beautiful area, we have, and we are in the Holy Land. It's one Jerusalem, one Palestine, one Israel. So we could make, we could make wonders. Palestinian spokesman Sai Barakat was livid at U.S. presidential candidate Mitt Romney when he was in the region last week. Are you concerned about a November victory? It was shameful, really, for all the presidents who, or candidates who came to this area. They visited Ramallah, except Mr. Romney. I was hoping that he will do it. I have written letters to, to his party to make sure that they should, they should have this candidate to come and visit us. But he didn't do it, and he, made, uh, he was misinformed. He was uh, mis I mean, he was quoting something really uh, not as if he doesn't know. And uh, it's just a shame, really. It's very shameful. And then saying that the Jewish culture is superior to the, uh, that, to the Palestinians. Why is this? I don't know. I mean, he, he compared the GDP, uh, the gross, I mean, the per capita income of the Israelis around 30,000. He said for the Palestinians, 10,000 per year. Uh, he missed, he added a zero there. It's a thousand, almost a thousand to 30,000. He doesn't know. And he, he, being, he demonstrated he was racist, really, on, on this thing. I mean, we wanted a president to say what is best for this region, what is best for the world, and what is best for America. And an American president, president should be the president of the world. Are the Palestinians concerned that Washington has become too pro-Israel? <laughs> you know, after Eisenhower and President, later, President Eisenhower and after President Carter, all presidents of the United States administration and Congress is one-sided. Uh, we don't mind to have one-sided, but not, not 90%. Give them 55, give them 60% to Israel, but give us 40 uh, on the balance of, of things, because we are here, we like to be friends of the United States. We love to be, and so many Arabs are in America, and so, I mean, the, uh, the interest of America in so many places in the Arab world. Why would they do something of this sort I don't understand it. I think it's, uh, it's very, very tough. I, I blame the politicians. I blame the uh, Congress that it is what they look at their personal benefits and they forget about the interest of the United States.